Like, I cannot tell you. I'm sorry I'm pausing this so much. And if you want to turn this video off, I completely understand. But I cannot tell you how many times I read the pages of this strategy guide back to back. So by now you guys would have seen that there's a bit of PSO content coming to the channel, which is a game that I hold incredibly dear to my heart. And I've actually been recommended the video that I want to watch with you guys today. And someone recommended this to me on the basis that it's ultimately a reflection on your first experience with PSO and sort of how you felt and the guy that, that conducts the video. I've kind of had a brief look into it, not massively, but you can tell he's got so much passion and I've actually come across Happy Console Gamer a couple of times. So I really want to look into this and kind of share my initial thoughts of Fantasy Star Online because it's a game that, although it isn't flourishing in terms of, of player base now, I will say that it's a game that the, for the people that are still playing it, they are the most dedicated, passionate, loving and caring people in the gaming atmosphere. It's its incredible. So yeah, we're going to give this a watch and uh, I'll just kind of share my thoughts as, as we go along. So welcome back to another episode and welcome to the 20th anniversary of Fantasy Star Online. If it's this been that long right already, here. that's crazy. January 29th, 2001. Yeah. I can't believe it. And I've said it often on the show. Sometimes I can't believe uh, the amount of time that has passed. Wow. Because, because to me, it seems like it was yesterday that Fantasy Star Online came out. I remember it, the night. Do you know what? It really does. Like, I will try and not pause this video too much. But what uh, what Johnny's saying there is is absolutely correct. Because, you know, I, I still remember the day that we actually got the game. In fact, it wasn't myself. Like, my dad had had bought the game and uh, bought this console that I knew nothing about, this Dreamcast. You know, back then things were so easy, so primitive. And uh, he, he put this game in. I just remember being just mesmerized. I couldn't have been any older than seven, eight years old. And I was just fascinated that you could play this game online with people that you've never met before. You know, you just, you make an, an artificial version of yourself and it's just in the game. And it was just surreal to see and the hours the hours i spent just watching and just staring in awe about what was happening and, and taking all the levels and all the different enemies and the weapons and i lost so many hours to that it's it's insane extremely well it was amazing it was incredible and today what i thought i would do is talk about fancy star online i've done it before i'm going to cover some ground that i've done before but what's going to be new is I'm going to show my characters and a lot of their special weapons. Oh, no way. He's still got the original. 20 years ago. I still have them on, on the VMUs. VMU after no. All this time. And it's amazing to be able to show them. Wow. Some of the weapons and why I chose. Look at the burger mag. Names are about. <laughs> I totally forgot about stuff. that. <laughs> but to begin with, let me just go back. Let me bathe in the nostalgia of 20 years ago because I can't believe. Enlighten that us, brother. Much time has gone by already. And I was a big fan, as you know, as you know, of Fancy Star in the 80s. And oh, then of course. So we start to hear. I don't want to be, you know, a complete traitor here but i've never experienced those older versions of fantasy star i was well aware that they were there but i've never actually played them um i think i don't know i, I guess just because fantasy star online was that first iteration that kind of really hooked me and, and got his vice so i didn't really want to explore anything else but i'd love to know a bit more of the background in fact i'm pretty sure in we used to have this collector's edition strategy guide for pso and i'm pretty sure that I had some background information about it i could be wrong would love to to keep hold of this guy in the, in the background he's got props to him because he's got so many amazing retro collections i'm so jealous about something coming out on the sega dreamcast look the at Swan that Kong for sega i'm, I'm sorry line. you can't this just pull that out and then move on dreamcast. look at this i've never seen my childhood summarized more in one picture i i, I want a dreamcast again I just do. I don't, I don't even want to play it. I just want it for the sake of owning it. The swan song for Sega hardware-wise. This was their Good old, old Sonic. All end all 
machine and it turned out to be so unfortunately but boy did we ever get some oh this just reminds me of such an easier time in life store online was one of those yes innovations. i mean it was it was all cylinders back then and they were giving us something brand new they weren't giving us another fancy star uh, offline game they were giving us an online game yeah correct and correct that was a very big deal for console players because oh god it was it was a huge deal it was the biggest deal like you know, I, I think PC gaming was very much starting to to take off at that time. Not to the extent that we see now, but it was very much starting to, to ramp up slightly. So to to see these people that perhaps couldn't afford or couldn't access that level of, of playing and, and that platform, you know, you, you kind of felt a bit restricted with a with a console. And for the Dreamcast to come out and have the ambition that it did to allow you to play online, especially in the form of Fantasy Star was just mind blowing. You could play this RPG with people you've never met before and you would make some of the best friendships and best memories. In fact, I will honestly hand on heart say in all of the games and all of the experiences, and I'm nearly 30 now as of next month, but I've never had an experience like that. And I know that could be nostalgia talking, but I just think couple this game with the year that we were in just life in general just seemed so much simpler so much easier you know you had no worries no cares you just used to rush home every day I've got to get on the drink I've got to get on PSO I've got to see what the guys are up to fuck my real friends I'm not asked about those guys where are the guys that live on the other side of the country or the other side of the world that I want to play with that's that's the difference it was mind-blowing we had never played an RPG online before from a console it was a exactly yeah console. exactly and i remember nearly 20 years ago for christmas picking this up i was uh visiting my mom and sister oh my and we went fucking god like, look at that uh, getting some stuff ready for family. i was uh visiting i dread does anyone actually know you guys that are in chat do you know how much that's worth these days or for anyone if, if this comes out as a youtube video does anyone know how much these dreamcast keyboards are worth now one in because that's clearly I don't think that's tarnished in terms of it being old. I think they actually, if I remember rightly, they came out in this kind of cream magnolia sort of color. I don't think that's actually changed. My mom and sister and we went to the mall and I was like, oh, I should start uh, getting some stuff ready for Fancy Star Online. And I love that. I love keyboard. that. That's nostalgic, isn't it? It I is, bro. From all the smoking I used to do back then. Oh, okay. So it, there, fine, fine. That's answered the, the question. Use, and I picked up. The strategy guide. I picked that up. Wait, no fucking way. That's that's the exact fucking one I was talking about. That is the exact strategy guide. Right, I cannot tell you. I'm sorry I'm pausing this so much. And if you want to turn this video off, I completely understand. But I cannot tell you how many times I read the pages of this strategy guide back to back. Every time I went to the toilet, every time I went out, if we had a trip and my mum had to take me somewhere, I would take this guide with me. I think I read this guide more than I played the game. It was unreal. The artwork, the, the, the weaponry. There was a part at the back of the book. I remember there was custom weapons and there was collectibles and it was just so fucking good. After the game had come out, and this is one of the best strategy guides out there mm. for the game. Yes, uh, agree. Here, here, agree. On Fancy Star as a whole. What was incredible is I'd never played an online RPG before. So that's why it's 20 years later, it's such a big deal. We live in a time now, I said it before, where every single game is nearly online. And we, we take it for granted now. We, we do. An uh, uh, 100 time, and, and it loses, this was in a time it loses the value. 20 years ago where you didn't really go online very much. You could do it on PCs, but on consoles... Correct. Uh, that's no. exactly what I was saying. Correct. put in the 56K modem, and I had the 56K modem at home, and I was like, I remember clicking it in, Fuck, and playing man. online games on the Dreamcast, and it was something else. It was something that, to Do you know that modem? One thing he hasn't mentioned is that modem was so hit and miss, bro. Like, I remember times where I, like, things, like, the connection would just drop out. Sometimes it would work. Sometimes it wouldn't. I mean, it was a groundbreaking product on the basis that you could fucking play online. You could play PSO online. But when it didn't work, it sucked. I remember January 29th quite well, quite well. 
I love the fact that he knows the exact day. That's incredible. That's so very cool. Very dark night, and I worked all day. I stopped at EB Games. I picked up Fancy Star. I had it pre-ordered, and I brought it home. Fancy Star Online. And I got home. I put it in and entered the serial number and did all that great stuff. And I and I made my character. And I I gotta say, you used to have to apply for. Sonic I think it used to be a hunter's license. Amazing. Was your online um, subscription? Graphics. And I still think the graphics. Hold Look at the graphics. Now. I think they're really amazing. Do you know what? They're not that far off of the Affinia server, the Blueburst version. Going online for the first time and seeing that wheel. And it's got that really weird yeah, kind of yeah. music. And I'm like, you just better control all the all little star with I your, uh, your, your thumbsticks. And I was talking to a bunch of people online back then. And they were all joining up the same night. We we're all getting together the same night, the same time. So I show up. And then all of a sudden... I start to see in this lobby they showed up as their names from the forums and it was a it was so crazy to me yes that there was a physical representation of me yes with my friends and we could use the keyboard and chat with each other as so, right, so, so this is the thing uh, chatting. this is the thing being able to not only create a character a representation of yourself so colors that represent you the character, the height, the weight, the size, the class, but being able to type to someone else you've never met on the basis that most people at this time were paying for top-ups on mobile phones that have just released, just be able to text people and you can instantly message someone on a keyboard was bonkers, absolutely bonkers. With the microphone, it did come with a microphone. You could use a microphone, but it's very- I didn't know that. I actually sense, didn't know that. Little, short little uh, words or you know, a couple of words at a time. So they never used that. So they just used the keyboard functionality. <laughs> and it was awesome as well because- <laughs> I love those little captions server, he set up. So you could communicate with Japanese players that had a, a translating device. And that was really exciting. So it could bring both countries and you know all countries together yeah. no matter where you were in the world you could all communicate with each other using the international translator that was in there and it, it wasn't super robust but it was a start and it was really exciting and then you know i could bore you with such detail i just i want to give props to this guy for the way that he lays his videos out i i think it's fantastic he he's got this very endearing personality this it, it's a very warm personality you can tell that he's excited about what he's talking about and he's not just doing it for the sake of oh this is my job or i get my he, you can tell he genuinely genuinely loves pso loves sega he's got uh, yeah i'm i'm lost for words but massive massive props to a uh, happy console because this is a fantastic video the amount of adventures I went on with my friends, and we you would do the same levels over and over. I mean, the amount of times I did that forest level over and over and over, leveling up characters, but it wasn't about that. It was about hanging out with your friends, chatting. Sometimes we just go in the forest level and just talk, and just talk about stuff and, and have, a, have a laugh. And that's what we did most times. And that's that's such an underrated way to see the game as well. Like it was much more stuff. than just an RPG, uh, graphics, so much more. Soundtrack. Really, the network stuff worked really well, really well. Even on fifty. This game, this game, what he was just referencing there about going in just to chat, this solved a lot of early issues of social anxiety for people that couldn't meet people in real life, that couldn't, that found it difficult to talk to people in general, to just be able to have an outlet, to be able to meet people that have no judgment. You know, they can't see any further than just the polygons on the screen, and I think that is what's made the game so strong even to this day is because it i mean I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are the same people that have played this game probably still have friends from this game even to till now it held up pretty well there was there's the occasional drop once in a while that would happen we'd be playing with a friend and they just disappear that was expected like i was sure. talking about earlier but it was with the modem Sega was trying new things with networking and bringing players together and they were ahead of their time they really so were, much, I've said this an amazing all the time. They were so was. far ahead. One of those ones I will never ever forget. It was like, you know, it was kind of like when you went from 8 bit to 16 bit to 32 bit. It was that jump. Wow. Uh, the, Look at the difference of that. that That's insane, isn't it? Fancy Star, being able to explore different worlds, different planets. That was a big deal in an RPG. That kind of jump where this gave me the same kind of feeling of a jump 
uh, forward in technology, in networking, in an experience I've never, uh, you know, I never had before. It was unreal. Uh, I, and again, now, I, I, can't, know, I can't mirror that enough because pretty much before then, the only games I would play would be like Pokemon Red, Pokemon Green, or Blue, I think it was at the time. Uh, I had like a Game Boy Color. And to pretty much go from that to playing PSO, Admittedly, my dad got it first, and then he started getting really into. It. I didn't obviously didn't know anything about it until he started playing, and I was watching him. And I was like, "Like, replace this word with a seven-year-old's word." But like, holy fuck, what are you playing? That looks cool as fuck. And uh, bro, I just I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait to get home from school. Like, ev all the kids would be going to the shop or meeting their friends and going for like to play football and stuff. And like, no, I just want to like strap my backpack up as fast as I fucking can run down the road. I used to live about 15 minutes from the bus stop. I used to run, run as fast as I can to get home, to sit there. My dad would already be on it, so I wouldn't get to play it anyway. But it's just so cool just to be around it. I was like, what is this game? And literally from there, I was obsessed. Literally obsessed. Now I go online and play things like Face Star Online 2, and it's a lot of fun, but it's not that no. huge jump. It is. Right? Yes. It's yeah, like such a difference. Mario, 16-bit Mario to Mario 64. I've Those played both PSO2 and NGS, and I can honestly say I've not got on with them that well. Totally different games, but I just can't impact. appreciate them. Okay, now I'm at the point in the video where I'm going to talk about my characters that I made, and I had a whole bunch of them, and they're still on my BMUs. All these years later, I, I still have them. Really I wish I still had my still BMUs. So I made a big deal to I really do. capture these in high def and really upscale them really, really well to preserve them for myself. And then I thought, hey, I can also show you guys the characters that I made. Now, the first character that I made, this is really funny because it's based on a Sega Master System game. That's the name of the character, was Govelius. I made a Govelius That's cool as fuck. He was an android, obviously, and running around, and he had such cool weapons. I made so many weapons for him. And you don't realize I how long it took me, just speaking about the name there, how long it took me to realize that each name and each character all add up to a certain section ID, and therefore that's what determines your section ID, that's what determines your drop rates for each particular class. You know, like, I was just playing, when I first started, I was just playing with a random section. It doesn't really matter to me. I was like, oh, look at this cool color you get when you put your name in. And then it's not until you get to, like, 140, 150, and you're like, physically can't get the sword I want. Like, why is the chainsword not dropping? Why is flower and sword not dropping? Like, why can I physically not get this weapon, this weapon or this item? And it's not until you realize that you look into it, that actually you've got a section idea of a ranger when you're a hunter, therefore you are fucked. I ended up getting so far advanced in the game that I started hacking certain items and changing the I forgot everyone used to do this. For my own benefit. I oh, know, yeah. I yeah, know, I forgot everyone I used to do this. I've gone through the entire game and collected almost all the weapons and armor you could get in the game. So my next thing to do was hacking items and making them more powerful because what else did I have to do back there? Yeah, the one thing I really loved in the game Look at the claw. was the Opa Opa Mag, uh, a classic character from Fantasy Zone. So I made sure I got Opa Opa for every single character and I just loved him running around beside my characters, running through any levels. I always enjoyed that. The other thing I really liked as well for mags was the Mark III Mag. That is the Japanese equivalent of the Sega Master System in the United States. Wow, do you so know what? That was awesome. I have never seen this. Why have I never seen... System. If that's actually based off of the, the, uh, the Master System, then that is incredible. You can... Yeah, actually, no, he's saying that. You can literally see the... I mean, obviously, the polygon count's fairly low, but you can see the individual, like lines the definition lines that's really in the cool states so that was awesome having that beautiful white console hang behind you as a mag as you're running around the levels that was so cool i was i was really uh happy with what they did with the mags in this game they really yeah. used their imagination and the sega fandom so so that's the thing though right so what he's talking about there about the mags is if you play any other pso now even the additions like PSU, for example, and PSO2, and you, the mags don't have as a defining effect on your character, your choices, your end game progression as much as they do in PSO. Categorically, I'm pretty sure PSU, I've spent 
500, 600 hours in PSU across the 360 and across the PC. But even that, you kind of feed it items, you synthesize it, you can upgrade it that way. But the mags in PSO have such a, a crucial, crucial difference on your character and the way it plays out to life now my main character was surge uh, he's the character i used all the time he's my main guy uh the name surge coming from chrono cross right everything had an influence back that's then. very cool I, it's I always relating it back character. to something I else so many crazy weapons with him like things like the, the do you know what the move sets in this game actually the more you so look at them dumb. especially with the weapons like that something i really enjoyed was they the always look so ridiculous punch, <laughs> to some extent your fists at people so that was a really cool weapon i also there was, there was so many weapons i had with surge i couldn't even name them all but one of the ones that really stood out was the giant battle fan we had this huge fan, and you're clapping enemies. It's making this powerful You just make a whip sound, sound right? Them. And it was very, very satisfying. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. Now for my next character... Yes, I think uh, I think in the in the essence of time, and obviously not to, to draw this out too much and, and rob too much content, I think we're going to leave the video there. But that's it, it's a really, really cool... It's, it, do you know what, from the flip side of, of watching it, as someone who has played at the same time, it's really cool to see someone else's passion for a game that is such a small community now, but has done so many things for the gaming industry. I pretty much, I can imagine off the top of my head, three or four, maybe five different franchises that have all taken inspiration from Fantasy Star. So to see it get to where it is now is is incredible. And it's always cool to see people's backgrounds, especially when he's talking about the dates. He remembers the exact date that he used to go home. He had it pre-ordered and he, you know, he'd, he'd made friends that he's now got for a lifetime, which I think is really, really cool. So if you guys do enjoy this sort of content, if there's any other videos that you've seen that you think about PSO or Fantasy Star in general that you, you know you would like to see, like for me to watch and perhaps give my opinion on, then uh, you know please do link it down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, leave a like, subscribe if you are new, and I'll see you guys in the next one.